Hello ladies and gentlemen, in this video I'll be taking a look at Kubuntu 1904, which is codenamed Disco Dingo. So there's not exactly a vast number of changes in this release of Kubuntu. Now the focus seems to have been on bug fixing, making GTK applications look good, and improving the performance of KDE. And I have to say, although it's not blindingly obvious all these changes, it is noticeable when you sit there and think, hmm, everything's working better, it's working faster, and it's working smoother. I have to say there's a complete lack of screen flickering and tearing, and that's with the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. Now I know that's something that uh, any AMD users have not faced, but yeah, for NVIDIA users, yeah, you got a little bit of screen tearing, depending on how you play it around with the settings, you could make it better or worse. And without doing anything this time around, it was perfect. Absolutely perfect. And there is a tiny new feature we can see here in the system monitor. I'd just thought I'd leave this up just to be a bit different this time around, otherwise my previous three videos would be starting the same. Anyway, you can now hide the menu bar, should you wish to do that. So as is the same with Dolphin, you can hide the menu bar. I suppose not really much you need to do with the system monitor, you customise it a bit, you can create a new tab, put whatever you want in, and that's what I've done there for getting my CPU temperatures. So yeah, just a little customization. So we can see here that we have the KDE Plasma 5.15.4 desktop, Qt version 5.12.2, and the KDE Apps version 18.12.3. We also have the new Linux kernel version 5, of which there has been some improvements towards the graphics drivers, and also progress towards fixing the year 28, no, the year 2038 time issue, get the year correct. Yeah, the uh, the point in time where we're going to run out of seconds on the 32-bit integer, which has been counting up from the year 1970. So it would roll back to being 1970 all over again if these bugs are not fixed. And I know it seems like we've got a long way to go yet, but bear in mind that some systems could easily be around for quite a long time, particularly some embedded systems could be around for many years. I don't really want to show you too much of my system because it'll distort your view of what an out-of-the-box Kubuntu install actually looks like. For example, I've gone and customised the menus, I've changed the colour scheme. I've got a snap version of LibreOffice. Yeah, I went for the lightweight install of Kubuntu. So that means you get very little on the system. You get a few lightweight applications, for example, like Kate and Gwenview and Firefox, which I think Firefox came pre-installed. So yeah, you get those applications but not much else. So yeah, it does allow you to go for things like the Snap version of LibreOffice, which is quite useful on the long-term support version of Kubuntu. And I could have an, an up-to-date version of LibreOffice, but it still looks pretty bad with just getting the stock mouse cursor. Although the menu theme is actually respectful of the rest of the operating system. I have to say in some ways that's an improvement over the Ubuntu on the GNOME desktop. One feature that will be coming to Firefox is the native KDE open and save dialog box, although it has to be enabled in the specific distribution, and I don't believe that is enabled. No, that just looks like a rather plain version, and I think that's more like the GTK version of the save dialog box. That's just something I noticed there, the open and cancel boxes are the wrong way around, aren't they? Just look at that save as again. Yeah, cancel save that way. And what does the KDE version look like? Yeah, save and cancel. <laughs> I don't know, I've never noticed that before. It does annoy me some applications being the wrong way around, the cancel and OK buttons, but yeah, it does seem to switch around a bit. Can we not just have a standard? Anyway, I don't think there's a huge amount more that you will gain with the newer version of the Plasma desktop. And we've got Bluetooth and battery status. Great, but I've not got a Bluetooth device that I can just connect at the moment, so I've not tried that out. Redesigned virtual desktop settings. The distro release upgrade notification. Didn't know that one, but I tend to do a reinstall every time. So that's the update menu there, and you can go and view updates. Let's drag that across. Ah, distro info data. I expect that's just announced in the formal release. Anyway, that's most of the main changes there. Like you've got Wayland's touch, drag and drop is now supported. This really was the goal of the Plasma 5.15 desktop, improving the usability and productivity, and solving bugs. And I have to say, it does show. Anyway, let's restore this virtual machine and show you what the desktop actually looked like out of the box. So they have gone for the darker theme, but I think it was more of a mixture of the light and dark themes. So we've got the dark panels, but with the light menus. So a mixture of the breeze, light and dark theme. 
this was the full install of the operating system. So looking through the applications, yeah, there's quite a few things on here. So we've got Firefox as the default web browser, Kmail. Well, I haven't installed Kmail on my system because I don't use an email application like that. So just little things I don't have. Default music player is Cantata, and you've got VLC installed as well. My preference is Clementine. Got the full suite of LibreOffice. Settings, not really too much there. The software installer is the Discover Software Center. And that will recommend both Snap and Deb versions of the packages. Deb is preferred over Snaps. So yeah, let's look at that size difference. So the first on the list for Inkscape is 14 meg. And the second one on the list is 174 meg. So that is the Snap-based application with all the dependencies included. I think that's about all I want to go through really. I have to say I'm quite happy with the latest release of Kubuntu. I have moved across from KDE Neon to this, so yeah, I lose some of the bleeding edge applications and desktop, although that could be replaced with the Kubuntu Backports repository. But at least I get a newer version of the kernel and perhaps some newer versions of the dev packages. So although there's not too much noticeable in the way of changes, the changes that have been have been with stability and improvements on the theming, particularly with the GTK applications, so it's definitely a worthwhile release to get. Although if you move from the long-term support release, you will be sacrificing what, three or four years of support because it's only an interim release, you'll get nine months support. And thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.